God may pronounce his final judgment on people before they die. Just as he pronounces his judgment on unbelievers after they die, there's nothing to stop him from bringing that judgment forward. He would still be just to do so. It's not God as if God is obligated to give them a chance. Do not get sentimental about God. As if God is the proverbial soft-hearted, soft-headed granddad who can never say no to his cute little grandchildren. We deserve condemnation. It's of the Lord's mercies we're not consumed. That's why today is the day of salvation. You cannot presume about tomorrow, partly because you might get hit by a bus tonight, but partly also because God may say, no, no more. He may say that now, so that you cannot repent. That's what happens here to his covenant community to the people of Jerusalem, to the people of Judah. It's too late. Even if they pray the right prayers, have mercy on us, take pity on us. God answered those prayers again and again and again in the time of the judges, in the early years of the kings. And now God is saying, you can pray till the cows come home. It's too late. Judgment is going to fall. Do not presume on a sentimental view of God. When will we know if it's too late to pray for or to intercede for certain conditions or certain people um, who may meet? Because it's also taught that we should persevere in our prayer, yeah. persevere in our walk, yeah. right? And yeah. and we we should always, you know, think about um, that God wants everyone to be safe. Um, but how do we, how do we know? Because we don't, we don't really listen like how Jeremiah yeah. listens to right. God and say that no, this is not going to happen. Right. So how that's a good question. And the short answer is, usually you don't know. But having said that, you want to say a little more than that. For, for, for example. Supposing you're a Christian Jew living in France in 1944. Already about six million of your compatriots have been killed in the camps. Let's suppose that all your family has been wiped out at Auschwitz. What are you praying? Lord, please convert Adolf Hitler? Oh, there might be a little corner somewhere that says, Lord, it would be spectacular if Hitler were converted. But if not, stop him. Kill him. Take his life before he does more damage. You're the God of justice. Do you see? In other words, you don't want to develop so sentimental a view of God that you forget that God is the God of justice as well as the God of mercy. Then in chapter 14, what we find is God's no to the prayers of his own people. That is, God's own people start to pray prayers when God says no to them. It happens in two cycles. Look at the structure closely if you're following. Cycle one, there's drought, 14, two to six. The nobles are looking for water. They send their slaves to find water. The ground is cracked. There's no rain in the land. Even the dough in the field deserts are newborn fawn. There's no grass and so on. So drought. Then the prayer, verse 14, 
verses 7 to 9. Although our sins testify against us, do something, Lord, for the sake of your name. We have often rebelled. We have sinned against you. You are the hope of Israel in our Savior in times of distress. Help us. Help us. Why are you like a man taken by surprise? You are among us, Lord. You see the prayer? And God's no, verses 10 to 16. This is what the Lord says about this people. They greatly love to wander. They do not restrain their feet. So the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember their wickedness and punish them for their sins. And then, cycle two, drought again, verses 17 to 18. Speak this word to them, let my eyes overflow with tears night and day without ceasing for the virgin daughter of my people has suffered a grievous wound Verse 18, I see the ravages of famine. Both prophet and priest have gone to a land they know not. And then the prayer again, verses 19 to 22. Have you rejected Judah completely? Now it's not the people that are praying. It's Jeremiah praying for the people. Have you rejected Judah completely? Do you despise Zion? Why have you afflicted us so that we cannot be healed? It's a bit like Samuel trying to pray for King Saul. And again, God's no, chapter 15, verses 1 to 9. Then the Lord said to me, even if Moses and Samuel were to stand before me, my heart would not go out for this people. So here's Jeremiah's prayers and God's response, verses 15 to 10, 21. Too late. Too late. You can pray till the cows come home and there's only judgment. Now, this is not the only passage in the Old Testament that says things like this. I've just mentioned one where Samuel is told to stop praying for Saul. Stop praying for Saul because I have rejected him. It's too late. And in the New Testament, in the Thessalonian epistles, we read that God sends certain people a great delusion in order that they might believe the lie. 